Black people in South Africa will leave villages, will leave townships and migrate to another township or an informal settlement, a squatter camp in urban areas close to cities because they are looking for opportunities to make money. They will leave big parcels of land to go and live in a shack because they want money. If it was only about land, many black people would go and live on Ingonyama Trust land. They'd go and live on other tribal communal land. They would go somewhere else, but they don't. They are economic migrants from the Eastern Cape, from the Free State, from Guazulu, from Pumalanga, from Limpopo, from other parts of the country that gravitate towards a Durban, that gravitate towards a Johannesburg, that gravitate towards a Cape Town, looking for opportunities for a better life, not looking for land. But of course, one of the conversations is it's because their land doesn't have opportunity. And the question becomes, who is meant to fix this? Is it government? Is it meant to be the people that are meant to farm and work the land or develop properties or find some type of tourist attractions? That becomes a very important conversation. The average black person in this country asked, they can lie to you in the comments, they can lie on polls on Twitter. The average black person in this country asked, would you like two hectares of land or would you like a, a job that gives you 30,000 rand a month? I can tell you now they'll take the job. Some of them, you'll give them the land, let them have it for five years. And then they after ask them, do you still want to keep the land or do you want a job for 30,000? They will take the job because many people have received land and it's, it lies fallow or they sell it or they lease it to someone else. Sadly, because our education system in this country is not focused on skills development. The average black child doesn't know how to farm and work the land. They don't understand it. The average black child doesn't know how to develop property on land, especially for commercial purposes. The average black child doesn't understand tourism, that I have a piece of land, I can have a tourist attraction to attract people, whether local tourists or foreign, to come to my piece of land, maybe watch dancing, maybe come watch the ocean or a piece of, of water, maybe come um, camp, maybe come hike, and I will make money here. The people are not told skills. So land to them becomes something useless. I can give you a building on a small piece of land, the, the room the size of where we shoot on the panel show. And one person will look at this piece of land and say, I will plant spinach and sell that spinach to spa, pick and pay and make 10,000 rand a month. The next person will say, on this piece of land, I'm going to open a spaza shop and I'm going to sell to people and I'm going to make 20,000 rand a month. The next person will say, on this little piece of land, I'm going to dance every day and people will come watch me and throw money and I'll make 5,000 rand a month. The next person will say, I'll take this piece of land and I'll let a three-person family come rent at 800 rand per month. The next person will take this piece of, of, of property and land and say, I'm going to put a call center in here and there's going to be 10 people that work in a call center and the call center will generate 40,000 rand a month. The next person will say, I'm going to take this little room, turn it into a hedge fund and I'm going to bring hedge fund managers and we're going to manage 100 million rand here and we're going to be making a million rand a month on this same piece of property based on your skills, based sometimes on your location, based on how industrious you can create this space. There's a joke that's always thrown around that if you took all the inhabitants of Santon and you moved them to Alex forcefully and you took all the inhabitants of Alex, Alexandra Township, and you've pushed them into Santon, within 10 years, Alexandra will have developed and Santon will have deteriorated. Because sometimes it's not about the land. It is about the skills and the mindset of the person on that piece of land. Saul Kirzner, successful Jewish uh, entrepreneur in South Africa, went to an obscure piece of land. It might have been tribal, if I'm not mistaken. An obscure piece of land, and he built Sun City in the middle of nowhere. It's become a huge tourist attraction, makes a lot of money. Similar move was done in the desert in Nevada to build Las Vegas. Today, the Afrikaner community of Orania has gone into the Northern Cape, obscure, no one wants to go there, it's far, to go and build their own settlement there. And it's become a bit of a tourist attraction, their own town, they're industrializing. You can bring a group of talented people into an informal settlement, a squatter camp, and they can turn it into something beautiful. 
So the average South African is not looking for land. They are looking for a job. They're looking for the ability to run a business and enterprise, make a bit of money and have a, a life. And for people that speak about once I have my land and my farm, let's do this exercise, which I love doing. If you've been paying attention, how much land is South Africa? 122 million hectares. How many people do we have in South Africa? According to stats, census, 62 million. Assuming that the whole of South Africa is viable land, and if we said, you know what, we're snapping our fingers, everyone is getting their fair share. Every South African would get two hectares of land. That's two rugby fields. It's a good piece of land. Two hectares. Now, assuming that half of the country is rock, it's mountain, you can't really build anything on there, you can't really farm, let's say half, just for ease of understanding. That means each of us is meant to sit on one rugby field. If you ever get a chance, go onto a rugby field, maybe go onto a soccer field and be like, according to Penn, this is what I'm supposed to own by myself. What would I do with this piece of land if I owned it? One hectare. That's for one person. Obviously, if you're a family of three, it's three hectares. When we speak about land redistribution, when we speak about land equity, when we speak about land justice, there are black people in this country that own 10 hectares, 50 hectares, 100 hectares. We would have to take land away from them. And they'll tell you, no, but chief, I can't run a successful enterprise if you take away my land. But that's the argument that many white people, some colored, some Indian make as well. That's where ex-president Tabumbegi speaks about land should be given to those who can work it. South Africa is a country, according to the ANC and their leaders, is a country that belongs to everyone in it. But Tabumbegi said the land must be given to those who can work it. 